Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's begin today's daily quiz with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to the nutrient-based subsidy program for fertilizers in India. Number one, under the scheme of fixed amount of subsidy decided on an annual basis is provided on each grade of subsidized phosphatic and potassium fertilizers, including urea, based on the nutrient content present in them. Second. The domestic and international cost of P and K fertilizers, that is phosphatic and potassium fertilizers, is considered along with the country's inventory levels and current exchange rate in order to decide the MRP. Third, the NBS policy, that is a nutrient-based subsidy policy, intends to increase the consumption of P and K fertilizers so that the optimum balance of NPK, that is 4 is to 2 is to 1, is achieved. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is B. 2 and 3 are correct. The first statement is wrong because this entire program does not include urea. Urea has been kept out of it and there is a lot of indication in the question itself that will give you the correct answer. The question itself says that it is for P and K fertilizers. Urea as we know is very rich in nitrogen. So that is the N component. The scheme is mainly to improve the consumption of P and K. Because of the high subsidy of urea in the country for so many years, the urea consumption has increased much more than what is required, resulting in very high levels of nitrogen in the soil and the scheme aims to offset that only. The reason why we are asking this question is because the inter-ministerial committee has recommended revision of nutrient-based subsidy rates for the upcoming Kharif season on the average international prices of fertilizers which are increasing along with the crude oil prices throughout the world. The article tells you that in April of 2022, the international price of urea has increased by 145% as compared to April of 2021. The prices of DAP, that is diammonium phosphate, on the other hand, has remained the same. Next, question number two. Which among the following nations is or are not a member of OPEC, that is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries? Russia, Gabon, Venezuela, Nigeria, USA and Brunei. You have to tell which of these is not a member of OPEC. The correct answer here is Russia, USA and Brunei. These three are not members of the OPEC and that is why the correct answer here is D. All the other members are a part of the group called the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries including Gabon, Venezuela and Nigeria. The reason why we are discussing this question is because of this news in the Hindu newspaper today according to which OPEC's share of oil imports has studied in India after a 6 year slump. The share may dip further in the future because we have decided to import much more oil from Russia as compared to what we were doing in the earlier years because of the deep discount that Russia has been offering to India after the global sanctions have hit Russian economy very badly. The article tells you that OPEC oil accounted for about 88% of India's crude oil imports in financial year of 2008. Since then, India has been trying very hard to diversify our sources of petroleum import so that we are not dependent on only one or two nations because our requirement for crude oil is increasing every passing year. Next, question number three. The Brew Agreement has been signed between which of the following two states in India? Is it Nagaland and Mizoram? Is it Assam and Meghalaya? Is it Mizoram and Tripura or is it Manipur and Tripura? The correct answer here, as you would know, is C. Mizoram and Tripura are the two states that recently had signed the Brew Agreement to settle the issue of the Brew refugees between the two states, which was a long ongoing pending issue. The reason why we are discussing this is because of this article in the editorial section of the Indian Express today, where the author is saying that in the past few years, a lot of peace agreements have been signed in the Northeast, including the NLFT Tripura Agreement of August 2019, the Brew Agreement of Jan 2020, the Border Peace Accord of Jan 2020, the Karbi Anglong Agreement and now the agreement between the states of Assam and Meghale that augurs very well for the northeast part of India. This has been seen along with the reduction in the number of areas where AFSPA Act is still valid in the northeast part of the country. The author says that the efforts made by the Union Home Minister since May 2019 that is, when the last elections were held, have been appreciable and this has resulted in the region of the Northeast becoming a part of Union government's first priority. And we are seeing the results all across the country now. There are still multiple disputes that remain between the Northeast states of India and all of them will be resolved in the due course of time as per the author here. 
The author says that the government's decision to withdraw AFSPA from many parts of Northeast has also increased the confidence of the people living in the Northeast towards the Union government. Next, question number four. Consider the following statements with regard to a dairy sector in India. Number one, there is no official MSP minimum support price for milk in India. Second, Operation Flood helped to unlock India's milk production potential. Third, India is the largest producer of milk globally. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is D. All the three given statements about the dairy sector in India are correct. Operation Flood, also known as the White Revolution, considerably increased the production of milk and milk products in India, making India the global leader in milk production. However, there is no official MSP or minimum support price for milk in India as of now. The reason why we are discussing this is because the Prime Minister was in Gujarat and inaugurated a dairy complex at the Banas Dairy where he said that this will empower the farmers, women and boost the rural economy even further. The new plant at Banas Dairy is a division of the Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation that is the GCMMF. The new dairy complex has the capacity to process 30 lakh litres of milk and produce about 80 tonnes of butter, 20 tonnes of condensed milk, 1 lakh litres of ice cream and 6 tonnes of chocolate every single day. Next, we have a previous year question from 2020. If you withdraw rupees 1 lakh in cash from your demand deposit account at your bank, the immediate effect on the aggregate money supply in the economy will be to reduce it by rupees 1 lakh, to increase it by rupees 1 lakh, to increase by more than rupees 1 lakh or to leave it unchanged. This is a very basic logical question from Indian economics. The correct answer here is D. There won't be any impact on the money supply in the economy if you withdraw 1 lakh or any amount of cash from your demand deposit account. Now to understand aggregate money supply in the economy, this is just the total stock of money available for use in the economy. So it can be in your hand or it may be in your account. In both these cases, the money is available for use in the economy. And that is why it is already a part of the aggregate money supply. So to calculate money supply in the market, we have to see the currency with the public, which consists of the currency notes in circulation, which are issued by the RBI, then the small coins, which are issued by the government. Apart from that, we also have to add to it the demand deposits of the public with the banks, which are called deposit money. Demand deposit means which you can demand from the bank at any point of time. These can be withdrawn from the public. You add these two and you will very easily get the amount of money supply in the economy. So taking out 1 lakh from your account, keeping it with yourself would not result into this money being taken out of the economy. Next, we have a fact of the day and today we will be discussing about the recent increase in the MCLR that is marginal cost of fund based lending rates and its impact on your loans and your day to day life. Now, it was in the news that the State Bank of India raised the MCLR for the first time in three years since 2019. They have raised it by 10 basis points, that is 0.1%. So the MCLR now will be 7.1%, which is still slightly lower than private banks such as SGFC and ICICI, which have an MCLR of 7.25%. Now, in very simple terms, MCLR is the lowest interest rate that a bank can offer in any loan. Now, because there is an increase in the MCLR, that means the borrowers now, that means common people who have to take loans will have to take home, vehicle or small loans at a higher rate of interest now. So they'll have to pay more EMI as compared to earlier. The interesting fact is that in the past few years, we had seen a considerable decline in the MCLR across the banking sector with every single bank. Banks usually decide their MCLR depending upon the RBI's repo rate because that is the cost at which the banks will have to take money from the RBI. The banks also are expecting a further hike in the repo rate in the coming months as a result of which RBI will try to suck out the liquidity from the system to ensure that inflation is under control because we have been seeing all the indicators of inflation going up in the past few months. A lot of analysts and bankers have pointed out that RBI may increase the repo rate from 4% in this year's July review. They are expecting a hike of at least 0.25 percentage points. This will be a surprise because RBI has kept the repo rate unchanged in the last 11 policy reviews in order to boost the growth across the country and in order to make the loans much more accessible 
and cheaper for the common public. All this is now set to change because of rise in inflation. The good part, however, is that the deposit rates will also increase. This is all that you needed to know about MCLR and its impact on your loans and day-to-day -day life. This is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.